Okay, it's Wednesday, hump day. Today is the 24th of October, 24th of October. Okay, I know I sound really happy, because I am happy. Would you believe somebody took the level on the little bubble off of my power jack? Yeah, that's pretty low. And why would you do that? And it didn't, it's not like it fell off or came off while I was driving or anything. You have to actually turn it and take it off. So whoever took it, that's the second time since I've been on this trip, somebody messed with my vehicle, with my camper. Yeah, I believe that the first time, I believe they somebody messed with it my jack, my, um, my, hold on, I'll bring the word up that I want to use, my sway bars, yeah, and now, somebody took a little bubble on the top of my power jack that has the level where the little bubble is for the that level where I check to see if my trailer is level. But that little bubble that's up there also protects the wiring inside my jack. And it covers the area where if for some reason I didn't have power, I would stick my manual crank so I could manually jack up my camper. You know, but it didn't. You know, it's a little inconvenient, but it's not a big deal. I'm sure I could order another one. It might cost me a couple bucks. But if this is the way I look at it, if they need one that bad, you know what? They're welcome to mine. If they couldn't afford to buy one themselves and that they had to take mine, or if they were that vindictive that they needed to do that to me, that's okay. They can have mine. I'm glad to give it to them. Even if it was involuntarily, I voluntarily think that they can have it and I forgive them for taking it. They can have it. I'll just go buy another one. It's not a big deal. I can still use my jack. I can crank it up and I have another level because I carry a couple with me. You know, I don't rely on that, oh, that one level as my only level to make sure that my RV is level when I park. I have a couple more I keep in my tool bag. Yep, because I try to be prepared as I can be. So, yep, and they're cheap. Levels are cheap. You could get them for two, three bucks, you know, at Kmart, Walmart, wherever. Little plastic ones. That's why when I was at RTR last year, I gave uh, Cheryl a couple little levels that she could put in her RV. You know, so not a big deal. You're welcome, whoever took it. You're welcome, in case you're watching this, or if you're not watching, it, whatever. You're welcome. No problem. If you needed it that bad. So, all right, that's done. Duck Commander, Buck Commander. You have arrived at your destination. I have, haven't I? Hi, so here I am at uh, the Duck Commander, Buck Commander, Duck Commander Tour, the tour, and Duck Dynasty in Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana, and behind me are the ducks, some of the ducks, and you can see that they're backwards, but I'm going to, not, this is, Camo Dave's going to say, hey, the words are backwards, I hate when that happens, but you know what, on my phone I can't change that, so I will turn it around so you can see it the correct way when I film it, just give me a second. And I'm going to film the ducks the other way. Okay, hang on. One sec. 
There we go. Okay, here's the ducks in the pond. I'm getting ready to go inside to see about the tour. And here is the sign. The correct way. This is what I see when I walk in. So there's people talking in the background, which I don't have control over. So there's some photos of the family. I love it, all the camo. Camo, camo, camo. Camo, furniture. It's a little dark in here. So as you walk through the museum and Phil Roberson, he was born and raised in Vivian, Louisiana. He was one of seven children in his family, no money. Money was scarce. Hunting was part of his life. He even went to college and he played football ahead of Terry Bradshaw at Louisiana Tech. The museum goes on to show you pictures. And a football uniform and graduation. Of course, I could show you everything in this museum, but I'm not going to because then you wouldn't come here to see it yourself. I said, Mom, Dad, look, we've got to get out of here. Si sleeping on the couch every day for two hours. All the rest of the guys are taking naps. Mom's cooking, which was awesome, but we just it just wasn't. All the employees were getting way too heavy. It was crazy. So. We ended up coming up to town and uh, getting a warehouse, and I got the big corner office. Uh, kind of what everybody dreams of is having a big corner office, and we have done a lot of work. So, um, took over Duck Commander, tried to connect all the dots. Uh, I have a few kids, uh, like half a dozen of them, and so uh, also do missionary work, um, church work. Uh, you know, it's just a crazy life, and uh, but it's fun. It's awesome. Keeps me busy, and um, I'm so glad you stopped in. I'm so glad you're at my office, and my phone's buzzing right now. So if y'all wouldn't mind, go in that room and make sure they're working, okay? Because they'll sit there, and they'll talk, and they'll do nothing. So just go in there and make sure they're working. That's some noise. So, hey, how's that? Oh, shoot. Am I supposed to? I'm pretty good at this kind of stuff. Seven is going to show us the first step on how to put together our duck call. Right. And these are mallard hen calls. Most of the calls are plastic. Um, when we put them together, we start with this piece here. It's a soundboard. Uh, this is technically a percussion instrument. It's built on a reed, just like um, some of the other instruments are, like saxophones and such. But when we put them together, if you'll notice on my reed, one end of it is perfectly flat, and the other one's going to have two cut corners with a line. When I assemble it, I get my soundboard, put my flat side on here first. Following that, I'm gonna place my rubber mag. There's a horizontal line on it. I want that to go towards the bottom. And the reason for this is because when I go to put my barrel on, I'm gonna put the C side on first because it's a tad bit smaller. But I'm gonna push it up to that line. And that's all it is. Okay. And the, what did you say when you did that? I just do a steady current of air. Everybody kind of has their own methods. Some blow from diaphragm, some say different things, some blow from the stomach. But me, I blow from up towards the diaphragm and just do one steady gust and use my hand. Some people use their fingers like Jace and some will use their hand like this. So everybody has their own way of it. You just got to figure your way out. Okay. All right, it's recording. All so right. just tell me what to do. I got a microphone right. on here, so. Oh. So next she's going to give it a try. I don't have my glasses on, so 
Awesome. I'm doing this blind. That's fine. So you'll start with your soundboard first, just like that. Yes, ma'am. Next, you'll get your read. Okay, when I get. You got it. And your flat side is on first. Yep, just like that. Of course, I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. Right, and it sits flush, so not a big deal if it slides around. I can't see the C. Um, you don't have to worry about that next. You can put that on there just like that. This yep. way? Yes, ma'am, because there's a horizontal line right here. Do I have it right? You got it. Okay. And next, you just get your barrel. Your C side is that side right here. I had it right. So that'll go on first. And you'll just push it to the line, but not quite all the way. So you'll push it just a little bit more. You can do one hand on each side if that helps. Is that right? You got it. Okay. And you might have to like kind of push it like this from both sides. So yeah, yeah, you can do it like that. Okay. You got it. And then you'll just blow into the barrel right here. This one here? Mm-hmm. And I say 10? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> That's it. How do you do with the noise? You go. Um, I just do a steady. <coughs> yeah. I just put my hand. <coughs> you got Ta -da. it. That's all it is to it. Very good. Thank you. You realize that if you're over 60, you don't have to get out. That's right. I mean, look at this. Look. <laughs> so you got a pretty good deal. Y'all pay a $5 for your license, and you don't have to get out, and you don't have to be still. Old age has its moments. Therefore, this little crowd that you're seeing here, we believe that. Put your faith in that if you have it. Repent of your sins. Make Jesus Lord. Love God and love your neighbor. It's a wonderful thing. With that, I will thank the Almighty that we all tell people about for this food. And we will continue on our way. So y'all yes, right. Huh? Joyfully. You betcha, sir. <laughs> so y'all bow. We'll ask thanks for our, this great meal. Thank you, Father, for the good grub you've given us. you blessed us mightily. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you always wonder what things were like, that's it. It ain't been easy, and it's never been boring. But one thing we know is the value of our family. With ups and downs, we always have each other's back. With the good Lord and our family, we know that we can handle anything.